Hey guys, what's up? This is Diego here at Cinemageddon Reviews. So, I'm back again to cover another movie in my Spider-Man series leading up to No Way Home. Last time I talked about Italian Spider-Man, the 2007 short film on YouTube. This time we're talking about the timeless classic from 2002, directed by Sam Raimi and starring Tobey Maguire. And before we get started, just know that this is going to contain spoilers. You have been warned. Okay, here we go. So as I've said before, Spider-Man is my absolute favorite superhero. I love Peter Parker and Miles Morales equally. Miles because he's Puerto Rican, he's got invisibility and bioelectricity, which are really cool superpowers. And Peter Parker because he has cooler costumes, he's an awesome gadget inventor, and he's the original. But Spider-Man isn't just my favorite superhero, he's also the very first superhero I was ever exposed to. I remember the first time I heard about him, I was immediately fascinated by him. He seemed different from all the other superheroes because he was just like me, except I was 8 years old probably at the time, and he was in high school. As y'all know, one of the reasons Spider-Man is the most successful Marvel hero is because Peter Parker was just an awkward, relatable, shy high school kid who was going through a lot of stuff that high school kids go through. I think this is the reason that Spider-Man, more than any other Marvel hero, embodies this idea that you, the average person, are capable of great things. The powers and how you got them don't matter, what really matters is the person underneath the mask. So when I was a kid, I was blown away by this movie. I remember walking out of the theaters with my parents and wanting to go right back inside for the next showing. For the next year or so, I remember telling all my friends at school about the movie and the sequel that they had announced and giving all these constant arbitrary updates that nobody cared about and driving them crazy. It's, it's pretty safe to assume that Spider-Man was the first ever movie that I was ever obsessed with. Sam Raimi did such a great job with this first movie because he really captured the nature of Peter Parker and Spider-Man so well. In this origin story, we get to see Peter's arc as he becomes Spider-Man and learns the responsibility of being a superhero. And it wasn't just Sam Raimi's direction, but also Tobey Maguire who captured that spirit of Peter Parker so well. He gave us such an awesome performance, from that scene where he's first crawling up the wall and you can see the look on his face as he realizes what he's becoming. And then there's this scene where he realizes that avenging Uncle Ben's death didn't give him closure, but he realizes that being Spider-Man will. And they just captured what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man so well here. With great power comes great responsibility. Remember that, Pete. Remember that. Conversely, Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin were done really, really well too. They did a really good job at capturing just how desperate Norman Osborn was after losing everything he cared about and seeing how easy he lets the Green Goblin persona take over his life. You're honestly in a constant state of dread every scene this guy's in. <laughs> And obviously Willem Dafoe is fantastic in this movie. This is easily his best performance in my opinion. The contrast between Norman and the Goblin is so marked here. But what's even more compelling is that as the film progresses, there are certain scenes where you can't tell who's speaking, whether it's Norman or the Goblin, and it adds so much to the tension. Now a lot of fans will complain that the Green Goblin suit isn't all that great here, but I personally don't care. I like the suit, and it's definitely better than Dane DeHaan's face makeup or whatever the hell they were doing in Amazing Spider-Man 2. But that's a topic for another video. A lot of fans have also complained about Peter's organic web shooters, and I think this was a choice that made sense for this version of Spider-Man. I mean, yes, Peter Parker is supposed to be like a science prodigy, but this time he wasn't as smart as he typically is in the comics, and I think the whole point of this was to make Spider-Man more relatable to the more casual moviegoer. Plus, in my opinion, if the whole point of Spider-Man was that he has the abilities that a spider has, why didn't the original comics ever give him this ability? So from a writing standpoint, it actually kind of makes more sense for him to have his own web shooters. That's just the way I see it. One of the other highlights of this movie was the casting, and I think the casting all around was superb, not just Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. Obviously, I cannot go on without mentioning J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Who is Spider-Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. A vigilante. A public menace. What's he doing on my front page? I think they also nailed Mary Jane Watson when they cast Kirsten Dunst. Now, there are other actresses who could also do a great job as this character, but Kirsten Dunst really did deliver a great performance. Part of that also goes into how Sam Raimi directed this movie, because he knocked it out of the park. There are so many iconic scenes that I could just name off the top of my head, like the Unity Day festival fight, the upside down kiss in the rain, the building fire. And there's one scene that I still, to this day, have trouble watching, and I've seen many horror movies, but nothing will ever be as disturbing to me as the scene at the abandoned hospital where the Green Goblin kicks Spider-Man's ass. Man, that was, uh, that was not a good scene to watch, but man, was it well done, and so was this movie overall. 
There's hardly anything I don't like about this movie, truth be told. And maybe it's my nostalgia blinders preventing me from seeing it clearly, but objectively speaking, I cannot think of a single thing that I don't like about this movie. So for that reason, my rating for Spider-Man is 10 out of 10. It's hard to top Green Goblin, it's hard to top Willem Dafoe's performance in this movie, but you know what? That's just one of the reasons why Spider-Man 2 is better than Spider-Man 1, and that's going to be my next review. So if you've seen Spider-Man, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Do you like it or do you hate it? And what are some of your favorite moments from the film? As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And please support our Patreon. We really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Diego for Cinemageddon Reviews. And I'll see you on the Wasteland.